This podcast is brought to you by MakerMinds, a nonprofit organization. MakerMinds aims to spark children's curiosity and enhance their understanding of the world. Hi, I am your host, Arsh. I have to be honest, this is my first podcast, so I'm a little nervous. After all, I'm only 11 years old. As my first podcast, I wanted to explore the life of Mr. Jose Hernandez. So you may be wondering, why Mr. Hernandez? I recently watched a a movie about his life called A Million Miles Away, and I was, well, intrigued by his persistence. It's, It's just incredible. So let's dive in. Or should I say, let's blast off. We've got these sources here detailing the, well, incredible life and journey of Jose Hernandez. It's quite a story. And my mission really for this deep dive is to sort of pull out the most important takeaways and the, the key insights from everything I've learned about him. It's a real journey. It starts from very humble beginnings and then quite literally reaches for the stars. And you know right away that there's one fact in the material that just, well, it just jumps out. And it has to be the the persistence, right? The sheer number of applications to be an astronaut, not once, not twice, but 11 times. 11 times times. Facing that rejection again and again and again, and then finally getting accepted on the 12th try. Just that alone is pretty, pretty remarkable. And it gets even more um, compelling when you look at his background. See, these sources that I found describe him as the son of migrant farm workers from Mexico, born in California. Just imagine that path. Imagine that trajectory. Going from, well, picking crops in fields to picking orbit paths way up in space. It's just incredible. So let's start right at the beginning of his childhood in California with his family as migrant farm workers, which meant constant moving and always following the harvest. Yeah. The sources mention specific things like strawberries, cucumbers, sugar beets, and more. Whatever was in the season, they were probably picking it. And the material really highlights how, um, how difficult that must have been, especially for a kid just trying to learn, trying to study. It's hard to picture, isn't it? Trying to keep up with schoolwork when you're changing towns classrooms, and meeting new faces every few months. Just getting a basic education must have felt like a huge hurdle. It required immense adaptability, not just from him, but the whole family. But then, the sources point to this one moment, a real turning point. The spark, you could call it. He's listening to what? A crackly old TV when he sees astronaut Franklin Chang Diaz, the first Latino NASA astronaut, and he hears him speaking Spanish. And for Jose, seeing someone who, you know, looked like him and sounded like him doing that, it was, well, transformative. And he just turned right to his father immediately. And he said, that's what I wanna do. And his father's reaction, it wasn't dismissive at all. No, not at all. He said, if you really want it, then work for it. Extremely powerful. That takes us to how he started building that foundation. Because you can't just dream your way into space, right? You definitely need the technical traps. And that learning English was a very huge early step in school for Mr. Hernandez. He found... He was good at math. He had a knack for it. And he kept going. He didn't stop there. He got higher education. 
He got a bachelor's in electrical engineering at the University of the Pacific, and then a master's from UC Santa Barbara, electrical engineering. I mean, that's not exactly easy, right? It's rigorous. It demands precision and a lot of problem solving. It's this really fascinating early career achievement too from his time at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. This part you might not expect, right? He co-developed the first field digital mammography system using his engineering expertise to build technology that helps detect cancer. It really shows how those core STEM skills can be applied in, well, so many critical ways. Not just the one path that you might have imagined initially. It's a concrete example of him building that technical foundation with really versatile high impact work before NASA was really a possibility. And everyday challenges from growing up, like being laughed at for bringing enchiladas to school. Yeah, it's a small detail, but it provides such stark contrast to, you know, the global stage he eventually reached facing those kind of things. It must build a certain kind of grit, don't you think, early on? The material certainly implies that overcoming difficulties was just a constant thread from his childhood onwards. And that resilience, that grit, it's absolutely central to what comes next in the, so in the story. The long, hard road of persistence. Okay, so this is the core of it, the 11 rejections. 11 times NASA said no. How do you, I mean, how do you keep going after that many setbacks? How do you maintain that drive? Well, it goes back to his father's advice, right? Work for it. Yeah, the sources really emphasize his mindset. He treated every no like it was just a not yet. Okay, but he just, he didn't just sit around waiting. Not at all. That is the crucial part. He actively worked to change himself to become a better candidate. Right. He took specific action, very specific strategic actions. Like what, you might ask? He learned to scuba dive, which is important for spacewalk training, right? It's all about simulating weightlessness. Then he became a licensed pilot, adding another layer of technical skill, comfort, with complex machinery. And maybe the most surprising one, he learned Russian. Russian, why on earth Russian? Well, the material explains it clearly. NASA works very closely with the Russian cosmonauts, especially on the International Space Station. So it wasn't just about ticking boxes. No, it was about anticipating the actual needs of the job, understanding the international collaboration involved. He was preparing for, well, the reality of space missions, even when he didn't have the job offer yet. That's incredibly proactive, driven by that resilience built up from his childhood, that ability to adapt, to push through challenges. It just shines right through here. And then finally, finally, after all that effort, all those years, yes, NASA selected him in 2004. And then five years later, in 2009, he launched the Space Shuttle Discovery Mission, STS-128. He actually made it from the fields to orbiting Earth. And the sources describe him up there, you know, eating tacos and enchiladas and zero gravity bringing a piece of home with him, and playing Mexican music on the shuttle too. Little touches of his heritage. It feels deeply symbolic, like the material suggests. He wasn't just Jose Hernandez up there. He was representing millions and millions of dreamers, especially kids from similar backgrounds, showing them what's possible 
despite the obstacles. So, if we step back and take a look at the whole journey, what are the really essential skills, the key ingredients? Well, first off, the technical foundation is undeniable. Engineering, physics, math, and the hard STEM skills. These were the non-negotiable tools he used, as one writ says, to literally leave Earth. That background in electrical engineering, that probably translated directly. Understanding complex systems is also critical, whether it's medical tech or spacecraft tech and communication. We can't overlook that. And then being able to speak English, Spanish, and then strategically learning Russian. It wasn't just a bonus. How it was pretty essential for that kind of collaborative global science. Space exploration is an international team effort. Science rarely happens in isolation these days. But maybe the biggest takeaway, the one woven through the whole story, is just sheer grit and persistence. You don't necessarily have to be the absolute smartest person in the room, right? But you absolutely have to be the one who refuses to give up. His story is like the ultimate case study for that. And that really brings it back to you listening right now. Your own big dream. It might not be f space flight. Maybe it's tech, climate change, or building amazing robots. Maybe working on the next generation of AI. Or maybe just solving those really annoying Wi-Fi dead spots in your house. Whatever it is, the work you're putting in now, that is you building your launch pad. Every tough assignment that you grind through, every failed experiment, that teaches you something. Every idea that you scribble down on a napkin, even, you know, those weird contraptions that you might have built with cardboard and duct tape when you were young, all of that adds up. It's all part of gathering the skills and building that resilience you're going to need. So the final thought for you is to think about the difficulties that you might be facing right now. Are they just obstacles or could they actually be building unexpected strengths for your own future launchpad? Something to definitely think over. With that note, I feel slightly less nervous as I sign off. Fun fact, I love math too, just like Jose. See you next time on another episode of the STEM podcast series.